straight white Christian. No, no, Jesse, this is the subscribe thing. Oh, yeah. I need you all to subscribe, support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Got it. I have with me R.A., the rugged man. He is a rapper, filmmaker, and journalist, and I wanted to talk to him about manhood, racism, and current events. Um, so do I call you rugged man or R.A.? R.A. is fine. That's what the family called me. All right. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. All right. Can you guys see my picture? Yes, sir. All right. Because I'm Skyping from, from on my wife's phone all the way from Berlin, Germany. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, we see you well. Thank you for that. Um, all right. So this is man who are our, I want to first ask, are you a beta man or an alpha male? I'm not sure what that means. I'm a man's man, though. You know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, fight a little bit, you know, womanize a little bit. I'm that type of man. I, I don't know what, what is, if that's alpha or beta. I don't really know what the meanings are. But. A beta man, according to what I've been told, a beta male is an emotional male. He can easily become a, a housewife. Uh, he uh, identify with feminist, godless women. He is uh, weak in nature, and a beta, and an alpha male is Donald Trump. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm really either one. I'm not weak in nature, and I'm not Donald Trump, you know. But but I am at home, and I I, I do uh, I tour the world. I do a lot of work. But then when I'm home, I, I could be with my babies, and you know, put them in the tub and feed them and clean them, put them to sleep. I could do all that stuff too, you know. So. But I'm a hunter, you know. I'm a hunter. I go out and get the, you know, get the get the meat and kill the animal, you know. So so what is a hunter? What is a man? What is a man? Yes. Um, I think a man is, is you know someone you know born with a penis and and you know that's a man, you know. That's Somebody, a male. You know, Oh, so what's a man like? Like what's a rugged man? Is that what? The, I, 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 see, I'm unfamiliar with your show and, and what 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 you know the theme is. So I'm just going with, you know, uh, I don't really know where you're going with it. But is, a man is just a man, you know. I, I think you know my definition of a man is that, you know a man should defend himself, stick up for himself, you know, have a little bit of a backbone, you know. But uh, some men, you know, aren't the same. They might. Uh, you know, let somebody pick on him a little bit or push him around or, you know, not provide as good as others. You know, I I, I mean, you know, a word like man could be easily defined by so many different people, so many different interpretations, except for the fact that, you know, you're born with, a, with, a, with you know, a certain sex organ, you know. Right. Uh, it's interesting in that. Uh, I noticed over the years that most people do not know what a man is. And when I first started asking this question, I was surprised to get the responses I've gotten over the years. At one time, when men were men and, boy, when, and boys were boys, men knew what a man was. And now men seem to have lost that real concept of what a man is. And it's mind-blowing. So w what's your definition? You, you know, like, like, do you mean like a man's man? Like somebody that, you know, goes, you know, what's your definition? So I could speak, you know, see if I'm on the same page with you or not, you know? A man is a uh, uh, a man is a person, a male who love was right with all his heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else. He is the light of the world. He through him love comes, instruction comes, uh, um, protection both spiritually and physically come. That's a man. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but there's, there's some women out there who, who, you know, you know, love with all their heart that want what's right with all their heart as well, you know. But, uh, I mean, that sounds like... But that's a real woman. That's a woman who, who loves what's right. Um, she, is a, she is a woman who has the logic of a man. Oh, yeah, that confuses me. I'm a little confused. So... so, so to be a woman, you have to have the logic of a man. If you're I, a real I'm, woman, yeah, because if you notice, men who have the ill logic of a woman are not real men. They're beta males. Because they oh, think a man, like a woman a, and not like a man. Oh, so that makes them a beta man, you're saying? Yes, meaning that they're weak. 
Okay. What do you mean by weak, though? Somebody that's more sensitive, mm -hmm. you're saying? Yes. An emotional male is a woman. Well, I think that there's times in every man's life where certain emotions do come out. You know, if you're at your son's, if you're at your son's funeral, you're going to be crying and emotional. If you, you know, if you lose uh, your whole life savings, you know, there's going to be a, a, a time when you're, you know, emotional and, and, and you might get weak, even if you're a strong man, you know. So, well, so there I'm, is I'm a sure. time, there is a time for mourning. There's a time for everything. But men, real men don't live by emotions. They have overcome that by overcoming their mothers. Oh, yeah? Explain it. Go in more detail because I'm confused. Were you raised by your father and mother? Yes, I was raised. Well, I, 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 you know, they got divorced when I was four. I lived with my mother till I was about 11. Then I moved with my father from 11 to, you know, when, when I left home. You know? Good for you, man. You were close to your father? Yeah, he was my best friend. He's my whole life, my best friend in the world. That's the best thing that can happen to you, to be raised. If there has to be a divorce, I wish divorces did not happen. But if there has to be one, the children should go with the father. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that because sometimes, you know, like I said, my father growing up, you know, he, he was a Vietnam vet and he came home and he was going through his little troubles. And, you know, he was drinking, gambling, fighting, you know, he was... He was doing all the wild stuff and, you know, my mother, you know, uh, was working and, and dealing with, you know, my father being in and out of the bars and, you know, there's two sides to everything. You well, know, your but father, my father, your, say, father say seemed, your father seemed to have issues that he didn't overcome, but it's still best that you be with him. Let me ask, have you noticed, are you familiar that most black men are raised by single mothers? Yeah, I know. I know that whole thing. And, and, and what was it in the, in the, 50s or 60s, it was, uh, you know, there was uh, the family stayed together 80% or 70%, right. something yeah. like that. I, I, yeah, yeah. And have you noticed that most black men are just like women? They're just like their mothers in that they're angry, they're insecure, they blame, they're very emotional, they blame the white man, they, they blame so called white supremacists, and and they look to women and the government, and they want reparations. Well, I don't, I don't know if that 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 is, have you uh, noticed that they're I don't like think that? That's black men acting like their mothers. Who, they, that's they're not acting like men. How do you think they became that way? Which way? Acting, uh, acting if, like their mothers. But I don't know if that's acting like their mothers. It could be acting like their fathers. But you know, if, if you know, they're not some, around you know, their father. They're being raised by mothers. Only. Yeah, but. Yeah, but I think there's men that were raised by their father that still would say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, I want to get some uh, uh, help or attend, you know, s some help with things. You know, I think that. that but you men do agree that uh, most black men are raised by single mothers, right? Well, uh, you know, statistically, there's a high percentage. I don't know if it's most, but it's, it's supposedly a very high percentage and, of, of single mothers in the black community. Right. Yeah, I, I know that. And have yeah. you noticed that those guys are uh, at they act just like women? No, <laughs> I haven't noticed that part of it. I don't. I don't. I read I that. Noticed it. I, I have a lot of black friends that wasn't raised by fathers. That that. Uh, and look how emotional that, they are. That they did good. Were good for themselves, though. A lot of them, you know. They may but, have uh, women do good too, but that doesn't make them, you know, unemotional. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm emotional a lot at times too. You know, we, we you know, a lot of people had had uh, you know rough struggles, and, whether black or white, and, and sometimes the emotion gets you know a lot of men's emotions uh, get the better yeah, and that that's when you end up fighting and going to war. And, and you say Trump is the man's man, but look look at how emotional his tweets are. They're all everything's done on emotion, and uh, his feelings are hurt. You know, so. I don't, I don't know, you know, if it's the black his, community or white. What? I, his, the, and I'll get to the great white hope in a minute here, but his tweets are. <laughs> <laughs> great white hope. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell show this is. I, I, he hit me up on Twitter. You know, it's funny. And my boy Killer Mike, he, he had done an interview with the, the NRA, and then everybody went in on him about what a terrible person he was. 
And now I'm seeing this. I'm like, is this the kind of show where they're going to be like, already did that show. He's canceled now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I see, I don't believe in any of that stuff because I, I believe like whatever the platform is, if you're being yourself and you're speaking your mind and, and you're not selling out to somebody else's point of view just to be on that platform, it's yeah. fine to speak on any platform. I, right. I don't believe in like if you speak on MSNBC or Fox News or, or or the Young Turks, or or or, or you know um, Sean Hannity, that makes you, you know, some sellout. I think that you know these That's are right. platforms. Th these are platforms for our voices to be heard, no matter what the platform. You know. All right, let me take a quick break. I'll come back, and we're going to take some calls as well. Um, all right, I hear that you co collaborated with uh, Notorious B.I.G. Yeah, I've collaborated with a lot of rappers. Yeah, yeah. What was it like? Is he still alive? You no, he, no, he died. He died <laughs> over twenty years ago. But if I'm not mistaken, he, he was raised by a single mother as well. Right. Know? A lot of a lot of great men were raised by single mothers. You know. <laughs> Did you notice how much anger and difficult he was? Yeah, but I know a lot of people with anger and difficult. My father was an angry man. He was raised by by you know more with his father than his mother. You know, I, I don't know. You know, it's. I I, I think that's. Uh, I don't know. It's did a little know, strange. Did you know that what? the anger of a man is that of a woman? I don't agree with that. Where, where are you learning that from? Where because, did you learn that from? Because you become like whomever you're angry at. And boys and girls who are raised with mother who lacks patience or imposes her will or um, um, forces them to get a good education or whatever she does or turn them against the father. The kids become angry. They're innocent up until the point they become angry and they lose that identity and take on the identity of their mothers. And that's why uh, when you, when, after a while they started, they start to become impatient. They become angry. They have no love. They are very selfish. They become just like their mothers and they can't get over it until they forgive their mothers. I don't know. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I buy that. Well, smoke on it. What? Well, I, 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 you know, because there's a lot of men in the world who, who aren't happy, who, who were raised by two, two parents that, that, you know, might have had every opportunity in the world given to them. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I knew a lot of, lot of spoiled rich kids that, you know, would run around and break things in their house and curse out their father, curse out their mother, you know, and, and you know. And you know and why, you, you know, right? Because the fathers are weak and the mothers are angry. And the, and the mothers and the, and the parents recreate the children and their image. The, if you want to know what the parents are like, look at the children. Well, sometimes, sometimes there, there's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that either. Look at, look at, uh, take somebody like uh, Joe Frazier and then his son went in the ring and, and got knocked out in the round and couldn't fight a lick. You know, it, it all depends. Uh, you go, hey, well, look at the son. He must be like his dad. No, he wasn't like his dad. He wasn't meant to be a fighter, you know? It, well, I'm not uh, talking about in that sense. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about in the real sense of who they are. Their uh, lack of ability to deal with life without overreacting to life. I'm not talking about a physical thing. You could train a monkey to go into a ring and fight, but it's the emotional uh, or the inner, inner person that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. What what was it like working with Notorious B.I.G.? What was that like for you? He was, he was, you know, it was a lot of years ago. I, I was friends with him before he blew up. We used to go around and, you know, play beats for each other and, you know, work in the studio. It was like working with anybody because he wasn't famous at the time. So it wasn't like, you know, now he's one of the most iconic figures in, in hip hop. And, and, you know, so it's a different thing. People are like, wow, what was it like? But but at the time it was just like working with one of my peers that was on the come up and, right. and and then you know and then you know a year later two years later three years later he's working with Michael Jackson and getting every award in the world and then twenty something years later he's this iconic figure so you know it's uh, you know and it's a question once you work with somebody with that magnitude and reputation they'll ask you that'll be a question forever hey what was it worth like working with Biggie, you know, so. It's amazing. I don't see him as an iconic figure. I see him as a thug. Well, you know, why is that? You know, did you know him personally or did you just hear a song that he made? That's ignorant, though, you know. No, it's, it's not... true. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, it's true that you see him like that. But what gives you, you know, why would you uh, 
just oh what i mean what can you even name a lyric from the guy can you even you know what is what does he do because is it because he's a rapper is chuck d from public enemy a thug or just biggie who, who's who's a thug why what makes biggie smalls a thug thug is men and women make thug is mu music they don't make good music they don't make decent music is, is they, are public enemy thugs i don't know who that is, is oh it, yeah yeah, yeah. Isn't what the, makes him a thug? Is, is it his skin? B.I.G. It, it, got it, killed down the road from where we live, right? Uh, this, this guy, B.I.G., was killed not far away from uh, Biggie. Was was shot not far away from where I, I live. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know about his music and stuff. But I want to move on because of time and I want to take some calls. I read yeah. that you were banned from, is it labor office? I was banned from everywhere in the 90s for a minute. Yeah, venues, offices. I was a wild kid. When I, when I was <laughs> 17, 18, 19, I, I used to, you know, maybe, maybe it was, the, you know, it was the emotional side of me, but I had a bad temper. I used to, you know, fly off the, you know, I, I, I got to calm and cool and got my composure through a lot of decades of, of work. But, but, you know, when I was young, I was wild and crazy. You're an Italian, is that right? Well, my father's Sicilian Scottish. My mother's 100% German. So. so why were you such a wild person? I don't know what it was. You know, I, I had, you know, m my upbringing was a little funky. You know, I, I had a lot of loss in my life. You know, my my, uh, my brothers and sisters were born, you know, uh, they, they were affected by Agent Orange. My sister couldn't walk or talk. My brother couldn't walk or talk, and he was blind. And my brother died. My sister died. My nephew died. Or You know, like, there was a lot of death and loss in the house, and and, and, you know, my father was a struggle, you know, we all, you know, this was, so there was a lot of uh, tension. And then, you know, you release it through the music, you know, so, and, and, we, and through the actions. How were you, did you overcome all that? Well, through the years, it took, you know, now I have a family of my own and they I got two, I got a healthy daughter who's, who's two years old. I got a healthy son that's one years old. I, I bought a beautiful home. I, so, I, you know, through the years, I, I, I found success. And I, I do better, but I still have temple problems. I still got issues that I got to work out, but I'm, I'm much better than I than ever than ever before. You know, so. you believe that. Ra do you believe that racism exists? Of course it does. Of course. And where's yeah. your proof of it? Well, because I see what people say to each other and what people think about each other and what they talk about each other and, and all the hate in the world. Yeah. Give me an example of something that someone said or did that made you believe that racism okay, I, is Okay, in. I'll tell you a good example. I was just in the studio. My producer, since I'm a kid, he's a black man, and, and, and the piano player is a black man. And the owner of the studio, you know, is a big guy, big white Greek guy, and he got a little drink drunk in him. And all of a sudden, he keeps singing all this. Uh, he said, oh, I got a funny idea for the hook. Kill the N-word, kill the N-word, kill the N-word. And say, oh, one joke, and we were all looking at him, and then... And then two minutes later, he's like, yeah, take it back to the plantation, old school, old school. <laughs> and it was like, he kept right in front of, you know, so so that's just this weekend that happened. So we're all looking at him like, yo, like, what's this built up? He gets a couple drinks in him, and all of a sudden, he's got all this hate and wit. You know, meanwhile, there's a dude who who hung out with blacks his whole life and, you know, made music and, and this and that. And then, then you put some drinks in him, and he's talking all this recklessness. So, so I mean, that's just... The, the first example that I seen two days ago. But why would so, you call so, that racism? I mean, if he hung out with blacks all his life, well, well he because know in his head he's roll. talking about kill the n word, kill the n word. But uh, because and, and, that's and, his environment, that doesn't mean it's racist. That wasn't his environment. They, they're not singing that song. But they're doesn't not mean doing he, that. Can, he grew. You say that he grew up around blacks and he grew, all his life and stuff have been around black people. He just, maybe he just picked up their habits. And that he, had nothing to do. No, that was not. No, that's ridiculous. It was it was a, a racist built up racism coming out of this man. That's not. I mean, so now we can't we can't take a word a man's word as racist if he says something racist because you blame it on you blame a black man for a white guy saying racist things because there is no such thing as racism. That's why that's a made so, up lie. That's not true, though. I if somebody I, hate if, if somebody has hatred in their heart towards a race. That's racism. No, it's and hatred. Of... It's hatred. Okay, and not so what racism. is okay? So, so what's your definition of I'll racism? I'll tell you when I come back. So, Ari, you want me to tell you what uh, about racism? Yeah, what? but the one that the one thing you say racism doesn't exist, and and then, but you know, through the decades and decades of of 
of, of lynchings and murders and it, what were those were those make believe is it like a holocaust denial you know like there's been <laughs> you know proven time and time again you know that, that racism you know uh, uh was the cause of, of of many innocent lives being being you know murdered you know so um uh first let me say hi that's your daughter yeah it's my daughter yeah how old is she she's two years old hi daughter two year two, what's her name that's Ellen, and here's my little book ahead. This is my son right here. <laughs> hey, book ahead. <laughs> hey, hi, That's Ella. John. John. He's named. He's named after Star hey. Staff Sergeant John Andrew Thorburn, my father. Right yeah. on. Nice yeah, yeah. man. Nice to have they a family. Just got him. Yeah. So let me. Um, I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama. I grew up on in the Jim Crow laws, and I okay. remember for colors only sign, but whites only, and there was no such thing as racism at that time. Uh, that were, uh, black people did not have so-called, we had, I'm, I'm hearing you. Yeah. And I have, hey, hey, really take, take her too? Black, Sorry, go ahead. Okay, black people didn't have so-called black leaders. They had families, fathers and mothers, grandfathers and grandmothers. They worked for themselves. They didn't blame white people. They knew that the government, that ran this Jim Crow law was it was just the government and not all white people. This whole idea of racism was made up by race hustlers like the so-called civil rights leaders, the black preachers, the black politicians, and godless liberal Democrats. It was racist and racist exi racism existed in the government and, and the people that followed it. Look at, look at all the photos of the lynchings when you see these evil men in the background smiling and and like you know, Laura, like happy that 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 there's a there's a dead black man on, you know on a tree or with hooks in them, and it's like these are real photos. They're not they're not fake, and that's racism. That's not a. But you prove you you said what it is. You said it was evil. It was hatred. It wasn't racist. It was evil. And all angry people are evil people, as subject to do evil things to themselves and their family members and other people. It has nothing to do with race. Papa, well, it does have to do with race when they're not doing it to their own kind. But they are saying, doing well, it to their own kind. No, they Whatever though. you do to others, you're doing to yourself and other people within your quote-unquote own kind. That word racism was made up by the children of the lie to keep black people angry, brainwashed, and dumbed down so that they can maintain power and wealth and then intimidate white people with that word so they can take white people's stuff. No, see, see, you're taking it too extreme. You're taking it too extreme because, because <laughs> no. I, I agree, I agree that 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 the left and Democrats use race to try to control people and separate. I, I agree with all of that type of stuff, and, and and they'll take it and call things racism that's not racism. I, I believe right. that, but when you say, oh, there's no racism at all, and that's just all make believe, and the people that killed these people, that's not racism, that's just evil, and they weren't going towards the race because they do it to everyone. Well, that then, makes people didn't, not believe. Why didn't, we call it, why didn't we call it racism when I was growing up, when the laws were against black people? There was no such thing as racism that then. Why did racism only come about when the civil rights movement started? Well, because they were pointing out what was going on, and they were giving themselves power and strength. No, they're evil. It. No, uh, uh, they're evil. I got to ask you this because I know I'm running out of time with you. Yeah. You had an interview with uh, Jared Taylor. Yeah. And you guys were talking about white supremacy. Okay, yes. Why do you believe that white supremacy exists? Well, the same reason I think that racism exists, because it does, you know, so we're not going to agree on that, because if you don't think racism exists, then white supremacy doesn't exist. Right. There's, there's white men that believe that they're part of a superior race that, and a black man is inferior. That is a fact that, that those people exist. But that doesn't make so, it real because they believe it. Oh, I know that, but but th that makes them a white supremacist in their mind. You know, they are a white supremacist. You know, so that, do you that, believe in black supremacists? Supremacy? What do, what do you mean? Like a Farrakhan is a black supremacist, like Jared Taylor's a white supremacist type of theory? Is that, Louis is that Farrakhan cool? believe that uh, the, the kids are making too much noise and they're very distracting. Yeah, you know what? I, I got to head to the doctor, too. I, I told him I had to right. 540. I'm sorry. So let me but just let, ask let, this real fast. Louis Farrakhan believed that black people were the first on the earth and that some black men turned evil 
They went into a laboratory and created the blue-eyed devil. Yaku, and that white Yaku, people, and, the, and that black people are superior to white people. Is that black super, supremacy? Well, yeah, yes. The story of Yakub inventing white people in a laboratory is a black supremacist theory. That's not. That's not reality either. You know, the white man wasn't invented in a laboratory. That's that's you know. <laughs> so yeah. But hey, my man, listen. When I'm in LA, we'll sit down and go deeper into it all. Okay. Uh, uh, um. I'm going to be on tour, I think, in January, and we'll have a longer talk, okay? I really appreciate your, your time, R.A., and I hope you do stop by when you're in L.A. All right. Say bye-bye, Ella. Bye, Ella. <laughs> See you later. All right. All right, buddy. All right.